Oh. Gives you a little prompt. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think we're recording now. Kia ora, everybody. Um, I'm Sophie Hoskins, the Eons Kaiarahi, and uh, we have um, Derek with us from Kristen School, who is going to share a little bit about um, a initiative for hiding a that uh, they do with their year, was it your year nine? Or year nine students. Year nines, yeah. So I'll let him uh, introduce himself and um, give us a brief overview of this um, Haidinga. Thank awesome. you, Derek. Thanks, Soph. Uh, the, the journey for year nine, um, we're looking at three lenses. So we look at a national lens, a regional lens, and a local lens. And we're trying to adopt a, a place responsive approach for that entire program. So we're trying to look at New Zealand and then narrow down all the way back to where we are, which is Albany and the North Shore. So we, the local lens, which is where the the main part of the journey happens, we utilize um, local parks and reserves in the school. And we also camp on the school grounds. And uh, the prep to the journey is students are learning all about uh, minimalist place responsive um, bushcraft essentially. So cooking on fires, building shelters, they make a pack out of a potato sack, they make these straps, um, their, awesome. their food bowl is an ice cream tin and they bring one you know, spoon and we try and keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. And then we're using the, the local parks and landmarks and some pretty nifty bits of technology to get the kids to explore and experience that local place. Um, A lot of the kids around here live in this area, but have never actually walked around the local parks. And there's some incredible history around here that a lot of them don't really know about. So it's a really awesome opportunity to get them to explore the place that they're in and really connect with some of those basic bushcraft (laughs) skills and um, have a really awesome little journey that's really local. Um, and from like a management perspective, starting and finishing at school and having everything run out of there is, is just fantastic. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And in some ways it sounds so simple, but I can imagine that there would be quite a lot of uh, still planning and organizing around it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Care? Yeah, carry on. Sorry. Yeah, the, the camp's name is less is more, but there's definitely a, a lot more work than you would anticipate for a really, really simple camp so a lot of time goes into the prep obviously beforehand to make sure the students all have the correct equipment and they they understand the things that they need to do and then there's the the you know the the tiresome labor stuff which is you know chopping heaps of firewood prepping the campsite moving equipment from you know one area to the other we rent some portaloos um but realistically once all that stuff's done it all just sort of happens there's not too much more we have to do in between there Um, just a bit bit of grunt work which can be quite um, time consuming. Are you finding that it's getting easier um, kind of every year as you know you're fine-tuning it? Yeah so I I haven't been the creator of this program was originally made by Jonathan Taylor and um, it's sort of evolved as the years have gone by what we've done to kind of streamline the process is we wanted to, to set some permanent stuff up, obviously in the bush, local parks and stuff, but that's quite challenging to do. So we utilize a really awesome app called Action Bound. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. No. But, uh, but essentially what it allows you to do is you can create almost like a scavenger hunt using QR codes without physically placing the codes. Wow. So, you use this app and you can create a course that has challenges that are linked to GPS coordinates. So as the phone or the device you're using gets closer to the area, it updates you and gives you your next challenge. Cool. So you don't necessarily have to physically go and place QR codes and check them. You pretty much set the app up once and then you give it a test run before. And then as the students get to clues and complete challenges it uploads all that data so the the host can actually see that and use that later on which is really cool awesome and that's called action bound yeah so it's a um it's a free app if you're not using it in an educational context if you're running a birthday party you can use it for free um but if you're if you're a school you probably want to look at licensing that yeah okay great 
Awesome, that's a great tip, thank you. And um, are you, you've kind of already spoken a little bit about um, place responsiveness and some sustainability aspects to your program, but um, is there anything else you want to mention in regards to um, that or, or kind of how you go about um, incorporating aspects of that into the journey? Yeah, so I suppose the, the biggest thing that I would recommend if I had to get some tips for people wanting to try and do a similar program is to just to go out and explore the area around your school and see what resources you have available. And then from there, once you see what you have access to, you can do a bit of research um, and, and sort of create some challenges that uh, teach students about those areas, um, stuff that they didn't know. And I think that's really, really powerful to help our students connect with those places. We also tend to utilize everything in that area multiple times throughout the year. So that really helps solidify maybe some areas that you sort of brush over with the program. Uh, and then just really keeping it simple, because I know that not every school is a, an independent school and doesn't have access to you know, a lot of money or students that have access to the equipment. So keeping it really, really simple with you know those simple um, things like ice cream containers and potato sack bags and um, can really lower the cost of the trip and make it accessible to lots of different students. So it's, it's, it's challenging because some schools, you know, they'll have great facilities or they have a great site and others might not. So it's trying mm -hmm. to find something that just works with what you want to do. Yeah. And so in terms of uh, keeping it simple, are your students uh, camping under tarps? And yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we teach them how the button method and they all get a tarp and they have to make their, they can either go for an A-frame or a bat wing and, and we utilize hammocks as well. Oh, so we cool. Bought, um, a whole group of relatively cheap hammocks that the students learn to pitch and set up. So the main things that they're really bringing are a sleeping bag and, and some warm clothes. And then the rest of the, the equipment is provided, which means it's quite easy to get all kids involved in the program. Yeah, and then cooking on the fire. Um, yeah, so. Chavins, is it? Yeah, so most of, uh, so we, we, break the students into tribes. So it's kind of like survivor a little bit. So we've got our element-based tribes. And the way that it works is each tribe is responsible for preparing part of a meal. So we've got our, our starter, our main and our dessert. So they're either cooking um, in, like they make a big soup in a massive pot. We have some bread that's going in Dutch ovens and then we've got some curries and stuff happening in really large um, cooking pots. So it's all made on the fire and it's a very hands-on task from collecting the resources to make the fire and keep it alive but also getting everyone involved chopping and making stuff which is really cool awesome that sounds like a really cool um you know program for your year nines to be part of and um yeah it'd be really cool to to hear some more about that um another time in terms of the, the yeah. other things you do but yeah it sounds like such a great um local way to you know connect to those local spaces for your class do you have any final top tips for uh, anyone who's like oh that sounds really cool like where do i start or um you've given a few already but any yeah any words? so I'm, I'm happy to chat with people if they wanted to get in contact with me and, and pick my brain about some things i think another really important aspect that we've started to utilize a lot more in the last couple of years is is um capturing that experience, part of that place responsive approach of storytelling. Mm -hmm. So what we try and do is we, we film the journey and we create something that we send to the, the Fano and, and the students actually have. And I think that's a really powerful tool because it allows them to, to show their parents what they've done, especially the kids who are not too good at um, talking <laughs> about yeah. their day. And yeah. then also we have it playing around the school so other students can see what we're up to and other teachers. And I think there's a lot of power in that because, you know, often people are like, oh, you're out dread, you just go out and walk around in the bush and you come back. But um, being able to show mum and dad that you made bread on a fire and that you, you, you know, climbed over a log, over a stream and someone nearly fell in and it was a great time. I think there's a lot of power within that storytelling element that yeah. is relatively easy now with lots of smartphones and access to those resources. It definitely takes a bit of time, mm. but I think it's really powerful to show people um, in your school and the, the whānau involved what the kids got up to. Yeah. So what do you use to put the movies together? Is there an, an app or a... Um, yeah, so one of our staff, the, the talented Omine Ivett from Craft Lab, he's, um, he's a bit of a 
he's not an amateur filmmaker. He's incredible. So he he yeah. records all of these um, video snippets and photos, and he cuts everything together on a, a just on his phone. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so everything's done on his phone. Nothing yeah. um, nothing advanced. He uses an app called Filmora Go, which is a free app, and mm -hmm. he creates some just incredible stuff with that. And then. Okay. Combining that with action bound, you, some of the challenges involve kids taking pictures along their journey. Yeah. He gets access to all of those pictures as he's the, you know, the admin running that app side. So yeah. even content that students are capturing along the way, he has access to, which is really cool. Awesome. So was that Film More Go? Film More Go, I think it's called. Okay, cool. I'll, um, I'll get the name and edit uh, in the yeah. comments of this video or something. Awesome. That's um that's super awesome. Thanks, Derek. I think we'll just no stop it there. And yeah, um, thanks for your offer to answer questions if people did want to get in touch with you. Um, thank you so much for your time. No worries. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome.